I swapped out my factory cooler for the PPE one, and here's the factory one. I'll tell you, I learned some things while doing the install. One of the things I learned was to read the instructions because I definitely didn't, and I had to go back in and do a couple things differently, but I've got it all detailed in this video. Let's roll it. This is it. This is the mighty, mighty intercooler from PPE for the 3.0 Duramax Diesel LM2. And today we'll find out if it fits the LZ0, uh, which is behind me and we'll get to that. But this is a behemoth. Look at the size of this thing. This is gonna be fun because we're going to compare this to the factory one, obviously. We'll, I'll pull that one off, but look at this bracket. They went as far as changing out the bracket. Custom designed right here. So that way it would fit the larger intercooler. I'm gonna compare all of that as we start taking stuff apart. But I mean, it, the whole kit, the whole kit is here. I'm so excited. I'm gonna start tearing stuff off on the truck now. All right, so we got the charge air cooler here. I already have the PPE intercooler pipe, so we're gonna remove those. We're not gonna need them anymore because the new kit has replacements for that. So I'm just gonna roll through and I'm gonna start unbolting items up on top. However, down below I do have like a catch can or a catch pan. I have um, a box laid down. I have some stuff laid down so that way it'll absorb the mess because we are going to make a mess. Unfortunately, because there is coolant running through this and that's just the way that it is. And I did not bring home clamps to uh, block these off. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a spill, but I'm gonna roll through with this, and I'm gonna start taking all this stuff off, and then we'll compare these these uh, charge air coolers. Slide off the lock. Slide the lock back. I mean, push down on that clip there. Being very careful. We don't want to break anything. This is our charge air cooler temperature sensor one. So I'm gonna slide off that lock. Push down on that. I'll pull that off. We'll go ahead and take this off so that way we can get the harness out of the way. And that just folds out out of the way. Now we have it all open. So we're gonna work on the NOx sensor and we're going to take off the bracket. So next I'm gonna just take off the intercooler pipes and that'll give me access to the charge air cooler. Look at the amount of oil in there, just from 1500 miles. So from there, we want to take off and take two sensor. So with it on the truck, I'm going to loosen up the sensors. 16 millimeter. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And I'm doing that now so that way we're not doing it on the bench. And I'm going to leave them in their positions to make it better so I don't make the mistake later on and put them in the wrong spots. So unbolt the charge air cooler. I'm gonna go ahead and move over here to the turbo side. I'm gonna pull off this uh, heat shield. So these are a different size, so I'm gonna set these up there so that way I know they go right here. We're gonna zoom in here on, this is what I just unbolted. And we're gonna move on to this bracket right here so that way we can continue moving forward. We will need to be taking off this 10 millimeter nut. And I believe there's one more. 
down here and we're going to do that so we could pull this away from the bracket itself. Get these two tens that's for the bracket and then there's a 13. There's our bracket I'm just going to set that right up there. Let's go ahead and work on this 10 right here. So it's the same nut so we're going to set that up there that allows this to not move very well so there's one more we need to get which is right down here. So 10 millimeter on a ratchet here. I'm hoping once I get it started I can just spin it off by hand. And that is the case. I'm able to just spin it right here like this. Now this will be difficult to get back on. So I might just leave it partially off. So now we can get that. And with pulling on that, there's a stud on there, which I think we can leave like that and then take off as a complete assembly. Don't laugh at me, but these are absorbent pads. I'm gonna set these right here. They're like little puppy pads, you know, like if, you're, if they're gonna go potty on the ground, this is gonna absorb it and like I said, I'm trying to minimize my mess inside the garage and inside the engine bay. This isn't a technique I do at work. I just go for it, but I didn't bring home bigger buckets or the clamps to clamp these hoses off and I don't want to damage them. So we're going to roll with it like this. There is no pressure within this system. So you don't need to worry about that. Yeah, I just relieved it. If it did have pressure, which it did not. You know what we could do? Using these from the other cooler, right? So we leave this up like that and we don't bump it. We minimized our damages right there. I got one more for the other side. See if that works again. So you want to twist these hoses to try to free them up. But I've got a little cheater because I have a hose pick tool. This tool is pointy. You gotta be careful so you don't stab the hose. But just work it in. Alright, here we go. It wasn't bad at all, huh? Now if we can get this to stay upright like that, okay, so now the cooler can come off and that's, that's it. Get this to the bench. I know, don't laugh at me. Okay, don't laugh at me. So that's not under very much tension. That's pulled out of the way. Uh, now we can get our diapers out. How cool was that that it actually worked, huh? All right, and there's the bracket that I've been talking about. So let's rip this off. All right, so there's five bolts holding that down. These are long. So if you look in here, there's a nut in here. So either I dropped a nut and didn't realize it, or this was left from the factory build. That's not good. So we still have our stud right here. Right, so if I pull on this without breaking it, hose attached right there. Let's get that off. All right, so that helps us there. Oh, we have to take off that stud. Ratcheting 10 millimeter. We pull on this. Move it on. Just go ahead and. Once you get it started, I'm able to just loosen it by hand. Okay, got that. And that's how we pull it out. So you see the stud goes there. The stud is actually still there. And I'm gonna need to leave it there so when I go to put on the replacement bracket, it's going to be in place to help me with that. Just realized too, I didn't even pull this off. Oh, oil in there. Factory, aftermarket, PPE, as you can see, 
right off the bat, what we could tell is, one, it's significantly taller. This is also propped up by the sensor when the other one's not. Let me take this out right there. So now we can see the height difference. I have these lined up so they're in line and the cooler itself is wider on the aftermarket one. It's taller. Everything about it is larger, right? So there's our comparison. Moving on, you know what? I want to look inside. Do you want to look inside? I don't know how I'm going to do this. I got this off of Amazon. It's pretty cool. So we could see inside. I hope it's picking it up. Now let's go look inside the factory one. So what do you think? Same fin density? I don't know. I can't tell. I'm not, I'm not an engineer. Now let's go in the entrance of the aftermarket, the PPE. Very similar in design, right? So if this one was working really well, larger should be better, right? Let's check it out. Okay, so this is our bracket. This is our factory bracket right here. You need to swap out these studs. Let's find out what size those are. So I've got a situation here. I have, this is a new toolbox and I haven't loaded everything in. So I just have the basic items, but this is a inverted torque six. Fits a little loose on there. I believe these are inverted torques fives, but I'm gonna try to make my six work. Hopefully these aren't very tight on there. See if we can do this without marring this all up. All right, so we can, we can see it there. Yeah, they're not on very tight. So my six works. So I'm gonna take this off here so I don't scratch up the box. These other three we're going to ignore because that's for the bracket that holds the knock sensor on as well as the cover but we're not gonna use the cover anymore because it's not gonna fit with this larger cooler. And then this is repurposed with this, which we're gonna talk about later on because there's a difference between LZ0 and LM2. And I'll install these two studs on there, right? I just realized there's one more that we need to swap out. We have these little rubber grommets here. These are gonna go inside. Make sure those are all good and straight. Perfect. We're back in front of the engine. Here is the replacement PP bracket. I can't remember if I showed it very well. But look, this is the factory one. And this is the PP one. Look how good they got this thing. I mean, it looks nearly identical in styling of it. And uh, so overall brace of it, I, they knocked it out of the park with this. I'm just, I'm very impressed that they have this bracket to allow for wider. Cause look, you're, you're gonna be cut off right here if you stuck with the factory bra bracket, you know? So this is thinking outside the box in my opinion. And I, I love this. Okay, so now what we need to do is work with that stud down here. Remember the stud that I was fighting with? Same way as before, it's still in place. I'm just screwing it in. There we go. If you just find the right angle, release the tension off of it. All right. Whew. We've been worn out from that. All right, so you definitely want to tighten that before. That's like crucial. I don't know if it's in the instructions or not to do that right away. Do it right away. All right, so now we're set up on that. Put this clip in place because they drilled the hole for the hose so it's not vibrating around. Let's get these long bolts in. These are the only long bolts inside this tray. So we cannot mix those up. When you put all your bolts in, 
start all of them before you tighten any down. The reason you do that is so that way the bracket sits flush and you're not like side burr, cross threading in the next bolts. Yeah, that one hasn't started yet. Here we go. So now we know all bolts are started, so they're all going to tighten evenly and not put any bind on the bracket. I did somewhat of a crisscross pattern, so that way it'll go in, but look at that fit. So what we'll do now, this is the bracket that I removed earlier. We're going to go ahead and slip that into place. Tighten the 13 first. And let's get these tens. Okay, so double checking everything. We're going to go ahead and get these. Get that 10 back on there. There we go. Okay, I don't know about you, but I think we are not ready to put the intercooler on yet because we need to put this on. So I took a little bit of the oil that was inside, lubricate the O-ring a little bit. I'm gonna look for the key way to clock this. The struggle is real with getting this on. Okay, so that's it now. So while I was at SEMA, I talked to Joe about the installation of this and he said, make sure you put this on before you put the intercooler on because you need to put the intercooler in there and rotate down. So we're going to set that right there like that. And I think it's intercooler time. What do you think? All right, here we are. Let's see if we can pull off this trick that Joe told me. You want to work that into the back first. So now this is a really tight area. I think I want to put this on first. I should have listened to Joe better when he was giving me the tips and tricks. Wow, look at the size of that thing. Is that crazy or what? All right, so this is going to go like this. What do we want? Which trying to decide which way I want the head. I think we're going to put that on the inside. Okay, so now we're going to rotate this back up. Gently. Slide that over. Direct this down. Okay, we're going to try this again. This time, we're going to put this on there first. Okay. By spinning this, get where you want. I'm squeezing the feel to make sure that we have a good seal on there. There's plenty of hose on there. So now we'll put this, oh look, I'm resting on that sensor. That's a huge risk. I could break that at any second. So you really got to be mindful of what you're doing. Okay. Very gently with my hose tool. So what I'm doing is I'm walking it around. So I'm feeling from the underside to make sure that it's not bound up and I just felt it pop free. That's all the way on, that's all the way on. That has a good fit there. Put those in there. All right, now let's get some bolts started. Now what I said, make sure all four bolts are started first before you tighten anything down. So, this one you have a, a tough call because if you spin it around so the head is over here, it's gonna rub on there. So what you really want is for it to be underneath, then it's really hard to get to, but that's ultimately what I should have done, because that's the way that it was. So right now, actually we do have to have it spun around. So what I did was I spun it around 
this on the bottom. All right. Well, that's tight, that's tight. So what we need is to get these ones tight. I feel like that would have gone better underneath there. All right, let's work on this hose. Give us some nice hoses. So this one's gonna go here to here. That's gonna make a mess. I need my diapers, but so once we pull this off, it's going to be some spillage. Minimize, rotate. All right, did we do good? I said we did good. All right, one down. So we go like this. All right, then there shouldn't be a mess. So I'm tilting it like this. So that way the coolant goes down to the bottom. I'm gonna throw the hose so it doesn't get in my way. All right, so I'm gonna set this in place so that way it's all clocked. That's on, that's on, that's on. Let's roll this over. All right, so looking down there, I used the wrong bolt. They gave you a smaller bolt to stick there. Uh, I can't show you because of the angles, but it's clearly not holding the bracket all the way down. So that's good that they gave that to us. And then on this side, I was supposed to use a bolt, not reuse that stud. So I'm gonna fix that and then we'll be right back. So let me show you. That's the bolt difference in height. So when it was bolted down, it was really like that. So the head was sticking up. Whew. Okay. So now that we've done that correctly, get these four back on there. All right, so the way that this is set up is this is for an LM2, this is an LZ0, it's not made for this vehicle. But obviously it all bolts in just the same except for when you come to the knock sensor. And PPE is aware that there was a change in the knock sensor size, they just haven't made me a plate yet. And um, so it's also a little bit thicker, so the bolts provided with this kit do not work with the LZ0 currently. So thankfully I have a longer bolt that I'm going to use at this time and uh, you reuse your nut from prior. Now again, this is just a temporary solution. There is also double-sided tape on there. Can't recall if I showed that or not. All right, so that's not going anywhere. They did utilize a factory style clip for the harness. However, it's not going to work in my case. It's just a little far, oh, it will. It will, so there we go. We don't have any crazy angles on that. Tuck this down there. Look at that. We are locked in. Let's get this stuff out of the way. It's time to fill the cooling system. All right, here's what I'm using. 50-50 pre-mixed coolant for this. All right, so we gotta take this back off. What you wanna do is fill this up all right, so I overfilled it a little bit. There's a reason for that. So we're trying to get it above the fill. See how it went down? Let's fill it up some more. It's doing pretty good. So 
So it's still bubbling. So I don't want to stop it yet. I just made a huge mess. What I'm looking for is a steady stream out of there. And of course, I don't have all my little diaper things down there, so I just made a huge mess. We were doing so good on this, so good. All right. See how there's still air in there? You want to do it like this because if the pump senses that there's air in there and the pump like stops or changes speed unexpectedly, it's going to shut down and it's not going to work. And then you have to cycle the key and uh, it'll come back on. So we're going to tighten this. And we're going to tighten this one by hand. Not too tight, so aluminum and aluminum. Let's get the cap on there. And then if your belly has knocked these off, make sure to put them back on the grill. So at this point, now that I made a huge mess, I have to water this down. 